RGB, where would we be without it? I remember a time before RGB, when PCs looked like this, Las Vegas looked like this, and nightclubs looked like this. Hmm, it's not too bad actually. But now... And what if that wasn't enough? What if you want RGB on your bike, on your skateboard, on your car, on your toilet roll holder? Well, I'm here to help. So today we're building a portable ARGB LED driver from an Arduino Nano. It's got a button that allows you to cycle through different effects and can be powered by any USB power source, like a power bank, for example. Now this isn't a tutorial on how Arduino works, so if you don't have a clue, check out some other YouTube videos first. There's loads of great ones. I based my Arduino sketch off of the Adafruit NeoPixel strand test, but I fixed it so it'll loop infinitely. The link is in the description if you're trying this out for yourself. The only thing to note here is the pinouts. In this case, we've got four for the button and six for the LED strip. And the pixel count here, this is simply how many LEDs are on your strip. In my case, it's 10, but you can do up to 30 through five volt USB. Just change the number if you're using more or less. For this project, you're gonna need an Arduino. I'm using a Nano, but any will work. A momentary switch. I've added a resistor here as an extra precaution, but you could probably get away with that one. A USB cable, an addressable RGB strip. Sometimes these are called NeoPixels or WS2812B. They all pretty much work the same. I borrowed this MZXT one from an old PC build. A USB power source, like this Xiaomi power bank and something to put it in. I'm using a project box from Amazon. Then you just need some basic electrical tools like snips, wires, and a soldering iron. So if you look at this diagram here, you can see the wiring is pretty simple. There's a link in the description to this too. Starting with the LED strip, five volt goes to five volt, ground goes to ground, and the signal comes from D6 to the other pad on the LED strip. These have different names on different strips, but it's usually D1 or N. Then for the button, D4 goes to the positive terminal and the negative connects to the same ground pin as the strip. Solder them up and you're good to go. Once you have the circuit complete, plug it into a power source to test that it's working and we're on to creating a housing. For the housing, you could use anything non-conductive really, like a matchbox or a Tupperware tub. But if you're using a project box like me, you'll just need to make three holes one for the USB port, one for the button, and one for the LED strip. To make the holes, I just drilled through the case and then, where required, bored out the hole with a Dremel and a grinding bit until it was the right size. The Arduino can then be stuck down. I used a hot glue gun for this. You should note, if you tested your circuit outside the housing like I did, you will have to disconnect the button and reconnect it once it's seated properly in the case. And that's it. Now you can attach it to whatever you like just by getting creative with gaffer tape and zip ties. The nice thing here is if you like playing with code, you can add additional patterns. Or if you hate that stuff, just copy and paste the one in the description. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of stuff, stay tuned for more projects, tutorials, and other bits. Doodles.